when we breathe out or when we breathe in, the diaphragm comes down. When we breathe out, it comes up into a dome, okay? A few things I want you to look at in this video is um, the kind of reciprocal activation of the lower lungs. So again, all that rich um, air, so to speak, or oxygen, for want of a better word, um, tap it into the lower lungs here by getting a full diaphragmatic contraction. So there's organs underneath, there's organs above the diaphragm. We wanna be able to go through a full range of motion to mobilize a lot of these tissues, okay? Whatever the diaphragm does, the, the pelvic floor is gonna do the opposite, okay? See if I can get that kind of contraction, okay? So again, when a diaphragm comes down to, to shorten, the pelvic floor is gonna drop a little bit just to make room for the organs. When the diaphragm is lengthening, the pelvic floor is gonna rise, okay? So again, very, very important. And then over this, we've got a lot of nerves. So again, your sympathetic nervous system, uh, very, very prevalent around the thoracic spine. So we want those ribs to be able to mobilize a lot of other stuff going on there. And then of course, we've got the, the rib cage underneath there as well, which has to, to react, okay? So very, very important that we understand that it's not just about muscles when we go to touch your toes or backward bend, etc. There's a lot of important um, tissues under the muscles uh, or certainly under the superficial muscles that we, we need to be aware of. So the importance for the diaphragm, so when the diaphragm lengthens, so you can see it goes into a dome shape here, you can see that the rib cage depresses, internally rotates and retracts. Okay, so they're the three dimension, dimensional movements of the rib cage. When we inhale, Okay, you see the TVA is gonna stretch. Again, the rib cage is gonna externally rotate and it's gonna slightly elevate, okay? So again, this motion of the diaphragm, it's reciprocal with the TVA. So when the, when the diaphragm lengthens, the TVA is gonna contract. When the diaphragm shortens, the TVA and the rectus abdominis and the oblique is gonna lengthen, okay? So the length tension relationship of all the abdominals are gonna be affected by the ability of the diaphragm to lengthen and to also shorten, okay? So that's the, the big thing I want you to take away from that. Again, don't worry too much about the percentages. Just to show you how to apply this clinically, if you have someone who doesn't wanna depress and retract the rib cage when they go to toe touch, you'll, you'll see a person like this, which we cover in the tutorials coming up as well. So again, if the person isn't retracting, you're gonna find that they're um, lumbar extensors are actually concentrically working here. So there's gonna be a lot of load going through the low back and their extensors of their neck. Whereas actually, when we relax the neck and we depress the rib cage, we want the obliques and the intercostals to tolerate a lot of that load rather than the, the low back, okay? So again, what we want is we don't want something to do all the work. We wanna spread that load throughout the whole body. So from the rib cage, um, from the, the lower back, from the hips, down into the lower limb. We just want everything to do its job, okay? Again, important to the diaphragm to lengthen. A lot of people, when they go to put their socks on, etc., cetera, they'll, um, they'll tell you, I get a lot of pain. Well, when we do that, we want the diaphragm to be able to go through a full range of motion because we want full retraction of the rib cage. We want the rib cage to depress and retract in a lot of these motions as we go down, okay? We want full hip flexion. We want the diaphragm to be able to mobilize and, and shorten there, okay?